Graphene, Wikipedia Audio Graphene is an allotrope of carbon consisting of a single layer of carbon atoms arranged in an hexagonal lattice. It is the basic structural element of many other allotropes of carbon, such as graphite, diamond, charcoal, carbon nanotubes, and fullerenes. It can be considered as an indefinitely large aromatic molecule, the ultimate case of the family of flat polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons. Graphene has many unusual properties. It is the strongest material ever tested, efficiently conducts heat and electricity, and is nearly transparent. Graphene shows a large and nonlinear diamagnetism greater than that of graphite, and can be levitated by neodymium magnets. Definition Scientists theorized about graphene for years. It had been unintentionally produced in small quantities for centuries, through the use of pencils and other similar graphite applications. It was originally observed in electron microscopes in 1962 but it was studied only while supported on metal surfaces. The material was later rediscovered, isolated, and characterized in 2004 by Andre Game and Konstantin Novoslov at the University of Manchester. Research was informed by existing theoretical descriptions of its composition, structure, and properties. This work resulted in the two winning the Nobel Prize in Physics in 2010 for groundbreaking experiments regarding the two-dimensional material graphene. Graphene is a combination of graphite and the suffix ene, named by Hans Peter Boehm and colleagues, who produced and observed single-layer carbon foils in 1962. Boehm et al. introduced the term graphene in 1986 to describe single sheets of graphite. Graphene can be considered an infinite alternate polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbon. The International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry notes, previously, descriptions such as graphite layers, carbon layers, or carbon sheets have been used for the term graphene it is incorrect to use for a single layer a term which includes the term graphite, which would imply a three-dimensional structure. The term graphene should be used only when the reactions, structural relations, or other properties of individual layers are discussed. Game defined isolated or freestanding graphene as graphene is a single atomic plane of graphite, which a euro and this is essential a euro is sufficiently isolated from its environment to be considered freestanding. This definition is narrower than the IUPAC definition and refers to cloven, transferred and suspended graphene. Other forms such as graphene grown on various metals, can become freestanding if, for example, suspended or transferred to silicon dioxide or silicon carbide. Graphene is a crystalline allotrope of carbon with two-dimensional properties. Its carbon atoms are densely packed in a regular atomic scale chicken wire pattern. Each atom has four bonds, one bond with each of its three neighbors and one iuro bond that is oriented out of plane. The atoms are about 1.42a, apart. Graphene's hexagonal lattice can be regarded as two interleaving triangular lattices. This perspective was successfully used to calculate the band structure for a single graphite layer using a tight binding approximation. Graphene's stability is due to its tightly packed carbon atoms and a sp2 orbital hybridization a euro a combination of orbitals s, px, and py that constitute the bond. The final pz electron makes up the i euro bond. The i euro bonds hybridize together to form the i euro band and i euro a bands. These bands are responsible for most of graphene's notable electronic properties, via the half-filled band that permits free-moving electrons. 
structure. Graphene sheets in solid form usually show evidence in diffraction for graphite's layering. This is true of some single-walled nanostructures. However, unlayered graphene with only rings has been found in the core of Prezola graphite onions. TEM studies show faceting at defects in flat graphene sheets and suggest a role for two-dimensional crystallization from a melt. Graphene can self-repair holes in its sheets, when exposed to molecules containing carbon, such as hydrocarbons. Bombarded with pure carbon atoms, the atoms perfectly align into hexagons, completely filling the holes. The atomic structure of isolated, single-layer graphene was studied by TEM on sheets of graphene suspended between bars of a metallic grid. Electron diffraction patterns showed the expected honeycomb lattice. Suspended graphene showed rippling of the flat sheet, with amplitude of about 1 nanometer. These ripples may be intrinsic to the material as a result of the instability of two-dimensional crystals, or may originate from the ubiquitous dirt seen in all TEM images of graphene. Atomic resolution real space images of isolated, single-layer graphene on SIO, two substrates are available via scanning tunneling microscopy. Photoresist residue, which must be removed to obtain atomic resolution images, may be the adsorbates observed in TEM images, and may explain the observed rippling. Rippling on SIO, too is caused by conformation of graphene to the underlying SIO, too and is not intrinsic. Ab initio calculations show that a graphene sheet is thermodynamically unstable if its size is less than about 699220000000000000000 a trademark 20 nm and becomes the most stable fulrene only for molecules larger than 24,000 atoms. Analogs are two-dimensional systems that exhibit similar properties to graphene. Analogs can be systems in which the physics is easier to observe and to manipulate. In those systems, electrons are not always the chosen particle euro they might be optical photons, microwave photons, plasmons, microcavity polaritons, or even atoms. Also, the honeycomb structure in which those particles evolve can be of a different nature than carbon atoms in graphene. It can be, respectively, a photonic crystal, an array of metallic rods, metallic nanoparticles, a lattice of coupled microcavities or an optical lattice. Graphene has a theoretical specific surface area of 7006263000000000000000000 a trademark 2630m2-g. This is much larger than that reported to date for carbon black or for carbon nanotubes, from A per thousand one zero zero to seven zero zero six one zero 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 a trademark one thousand M two slash G and is similar to activated carbon. Graphene is a zero gap semiconductor, because its conduction and valence bands meet at the Dirac points which are six locations in momentum space, on the edge of the Brillouin zone, divided into two non-equivalent sets of three points. The two sets are labeled K and K. The sets give Graphene a valley degeneracy of GV equals 2. By contrast, for traditional semiconductors the primary point of interest is generally I, where momentum is zero. However, if the in-plane direction is confined, in which case it is referred to as a nanoribbon, its electronic structure is different. If it is zigzag, the band gap is zero. If it is armchair, the band gap is non-zero. Stability Analogs
Grab Hane displays remarkable electron mobility at room temperature, with reported values in excess of 70041500000000000000A trademark 15000CM2A, VA1A, SA1. Hole and electron mobilities were expected to be nearly identical. The mobility is nearly independent of temperature between 70011000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000
The method can be used for real-time label-free interactions of graphene with organic and inorganic substances. The existence of unidirectional surface plasmons in the non-reciprocal graphene-based gyrotropic interfaces has been demonstrated theoretically. By efficiently controlling the chemical potential of graphene, the unidirectional working frequency can be continuously tunable from thz to near-infrared and even visible. Particularly, the unidirectional frequency bandwidth can be 1 a euro 2 orders of magnitude larger than that in metal under the same magnetic field, which arises from the superiority of extremely small effective electron mass in graphene. Graphene's band gap can be tuned from 0 to 698804005441217500000 a trademark 0.25 EV by applying voltage to a dual gate bilayer graphene a field effect transistor at room temperature. The optical response of graphene nanoribbons is tunable into the terahertz regime by an applied magnetic field. Graphene slash graphene oxide systems exhibit electrochromic behavior, allowing tuning of both linear and ultra fast optical properties. A graphene based Bragg grading demonstrated its capability for excitation of surface electromagnetic waves in the periodic structure using a 699363330000000000000 a trademark 633 nm he euro ne laser as the light source. Such unique absorption could become saturated when the input optical intensity is above a threshold value. This nonlinear optical behavior is termed saturable absorption and the threshold value is called the saturation fluence. Graphene can be saturated readily under strong excitation over the visible to near infrared region, due to the universal optical absorption and zero band gap. This has relevance for the mode locking of fiber lasers, where full band mode locking has been achieved by a graphene based saturable absorber. Due to this special property, graphene has wide application in ultra fast photonics. The optical response of graphene slash graphene oxide layers can be tuned electrically. Saturable absorption in graphene could occur at the microwave and terahertz bands, owing to its wideband optical absorption property. The microwave saturable absorption in graphene demonstrates the possibility of graphene microwave and terahertz photonics devices, such as a microwave saturable absorber, modulator, polarizer, microwave signal processing and broadband wireless access networks. Under more intensive laser illumination, graphene could possess a nonlinear phase shift due to the optical nonlinear Kerr effect. Based on a typical open and close aperture Z-scan measurement, Graphene possesses a nonlinear Kerr coefficient of 699310000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000
and the ultrasonic exfoliation method. Thermal transport in Graphene is an active area of research which has attracted attention because of the potential for thermal management applications. Early measurements of the thermal conductivity of suspended Graphene reported an exceptionally large thermal conductivity of approximately 7003530000000000000000000 a trademark 5300 WA. MA1A, KA1, compared with the thermal conductivity of pyrolytic graphite of approximately 7003200000000000000000 a trademark 2000 WA, MA1A, KA1 at room temperature. However, later studies have questioned whether this ultra high value was overestimated and instead measured thermal conductivities between 7003150000000000000000 a trademark 1500 a euro 7003250000000000000000000 a trademark 2500 wa ma1 a ka1 for suspended single layer graphene the large range can be attributed to large measurement uncertainties as well as variations in the Graphene quality and processing conditions. In addition, when single-layer Graphene is supported on an amorphous material, the thermal conductivity is reduced to about 7002500000000000000000 a trademark 500 a euro 7002600000000000000 a trademark 600 wa ma1 a KA1 at room temperature as a result of scattering of graphene lattice waves by the substrate and can be even lower for few layer graphene encased in amorphous oxide. Likewise, polymeric residue can contribute to a similar decrease for suspended graphene to approximately 7002500000000000000 a trademark 500 a euro 7002600000000000000 a trademark 600 wa ma1 a ka1 for bilayer graphene Thermal conductivity It has been suggested that the isotopic composition, the ratio of 12C to 13C, has a significant impact on thermal conductivity. For example, isotopically pure 12C graphene has higher thermal conductivity than either a 50 colon 50 isotope ratio or the naturally occurring 99 colon 1 ratio. It can be shown by using the Wiedemann Euro Franz law that the thermal conduction is phonon dominated. However, for a gated Graphene strip, an applied gate bias causing a Fermi energy shift much larger than KBT can cause the electronic contribution to increase and dominate over the phonon contribution at low temperatures. The ballistic thermal conductance of Graphene is isotropic. Potential for this high conductivity can be seen by considering graphite, a 3D version of graphene that has basal plane thermal conductivity of over a 7003100000000000000 a trademark 1000 WA, MA1A, KA1. In graphite, the C-axis thermal conductivity is over a factor of A per thousand one zero zero smaller due to the weak binding forces between basal planes as well as the larger lattice spacing. In addition, the ballistic thermal conductance of Graphene gives the lower limit of the ballistic thermal conductances, per unit circumference and length of carbon nanotubes. Melting point Mechanical Fracture toughness Despite its 2D nature, Graphene has three acoustic phonon modes. 
The two in-plane modes have a linear dispersion relation, while the out-of-plane mode has a quadratic dispersion relation. Due to this, the T2-dependent thermal conductivity contribution of the linear modes is dominated at low temperatures by the T1.5 contribution of the out-of-plane mode. Some grap hane phonon bands display negative GRA 1 fourth Nissen parameters. At low temperatures the contribution from the negative GPS will be dominant and thermal expansion coefficient negative. The lowest negative GPS correspond to the lowest transverse acoustic ZA modes. Phonon frequencies for such modes increase with the in-plane lattice parameter since atoms in the layer upon stretching will be less free to move in the Z direction. This is similar to the behavior of a stretched string that has vibrations of smaller amplitude and higher frequency. This phenomenon, named membrane effect, was predicted by Lifshitz in 1952. A prediction published in 2015 suggested a melting point of A per thousand for 125K. Recent and more sophisticated modeling has increased this temperature to at least 5000K. At 6000K Graphene melts into an agglomeration of loosely coupled doubled bonded chains, before becoming a gas. The carbona eurocarbon bond length in Graphene is about 0.142 nm. Graphene sheets stack to form graphite with an interplanar spacing of 699033500000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000
it has been proposed that the ripples are caused by thermal fluctuations in the material. As a consequence of these dynamical deformations, it is debatable whether graphene is truly a 2D structure. In 2014 it was shown that these ripples, if amplified through the introduction of vacancy defects, can impart a negative Poisson's ratio into graphene, resulting in the thinnest auxetic material known. Graphene nanosheets can be incorporated into a nickel matrix through a plating process to form anigraphene composites on a target substrate. The enhancement in mechanical properties of the composites is attributed to the high interaction between Ni and Graphene and the prevention of the dislocation sliding in the Ni matrix by the Graphene. Despite its strength, Graphene is also relatively brittle, with a fracture toughness of about 4 mpaam. This indicates that imperfect graphene is likely to crack in a brittle manner like ceramic materials, as opposed to many metallic materials that have fracture toughnesses in the range of 15 euro 50 mpaam. Graphene shows a greater ability to distribute force from an impact than any known material, 10 times that of steel per unit weight. The force was transmitted at 22.2 km per second. In 2011 Graphene was shown to accelerate the osteogenic differentiation of human mesenchymal stem cells without the use of biochemical inducers. In 2015 Graphene was used to create biosensors with epitaxial Graphene on silicon carbide. The sensors bind to 8-hydroxidioxyguanosine and is capable of selective binding with antibodies. The presence of 8 ODG in blood, urine, and saliva is commonly associated with DNA damage. Elevated levels of 8 ODG have been linked to increased risk of several cancers. A commercial version of a Graphene biosensor has been used as a protein binding sensor platform. In 2016 uncoated graphene was shown to serve as a neurointerface electrode without altering or damaging properties such as signal strength or formation of scar tissue. Graphene electrodes in the body stay significantly more stable than electrodes of tungsten or silicon because of properties such as flexibility, biocompatibility, and conductivity. A production unit produces continuous monolayer sheets of high-strength monolayer graphene. The process is based on graphene growth on a liquid metal matrix. Bilayer graphene displays the anomalous quantum Hall effect, a tunable band gap and potential for excitonic condensation. Bilayer graphene typically can be found either in twisted configurations where the two layers are rotated relative to each other or graphitic bernal stacked configurations where half the atoms in one layer lie atop half the atoms in the other. Stacking order and orientation govern its optical and electronic properties. One synthesis method is chemical vapor deposition which can produce large bilayer regions that almost exclusively conform to a Bernal stack geometry. Graphene nanoribbons, at low temperatures, show spin-polarized metallic edge currents, which suggest spintronics applications. In 2013, a three-dimensional honeycomb of hexagonally arranged carbon was termed 3D graphene. Self-supporting 3D graphene was produced that year. The discovered nanostructure is a multi-layer system of parallel hollow nanochannels located along the surface that displayed quadrangular cross-section. Three-dimensional bilayer graphene was reported in 2012 and 2014. In 2017, Freestanding graphene gyroids with 35 nm and 60 nm unit cells were fabricated via controlled direct chemical vapor deposition. 
they represent the smallest freestanding periodic graphene A3D structures yet produced with a pore size of tens of nm. A graphene gyroid has 5% of the density of steel, yet is 10 times as strong with an enormous surface area to volume ratio. An aerogel made of graphene layers separated by carbon nanotubes was measured at 0.16 mg per cubic centimeter. The material has superior elasticity and absorption, it can recover completely after more than 90% compression, and absorb up to 900 times its weight in oil, at a rate of 68.8 grams per second. Multiple production techniques have been developed. Isolated 2D crystals cannot be grown via chemical synthesis beyond small sizes even in principle, because the rapid growth of phonon density with increasing lateral size forces 2D crystallites to bend into the third dimension. In all cases, graphene must bond to a substrate to retain its two-dimensional shape. As of 2014, exfoliation produced graphene with the lowest number of defects and highest electron mobility. Game and Novoslov initially used adhesive tape to pull graphene sheets away from graphite. Achieving single layers typically requires multiple exfoliation steps. After exfoliation the flakes are deposited on a silicon wafer. Alternatively a sharp single crystal diamond wedge cleave layers from a graphite source. Another method is reduction of graphite oxide monolayer films, e.g. by hydrazine with annealing in argon slash hydrogen with an almost intact carbon framework that allows efficient removal of functional groups. Measured charge carrier mobility exceeded 1000 cm slash vs. Defect free. Unoxidized graphene-containing liquids can be made from graphite using mixers that produce local shear rates greater than 700510000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000
A two-step CVD process is shown to grow graphene directly on TO2 crystals or exfoliated TO2 nanosheets without using a metal catalyst. The atomic structure of metal substrates including ruthenium, iridium, nickel, and copper has been used as substrates for graphene production. Commercial copper foils have been used for graphene production, reducing substrate costs by 100-fold. Gaseous catalyst-assisted CVD paves the way for synthesizing high-quality graphene for device applications while avoiding the transfer process. Gram quantities were produced by the reduction of ethanol by sodium metal, followed by pyrolysis and washing with water. Growing graphene in an industrial resistive heating cold wall CVD system was claimed to produce graphene 100 times faster than conventional CVD systems, cut costs by 99% and produce material with enhanced electronic qualities. Experiments with precise control of process parameters during cold wall CVD provided conclusive insight into the classical surface-mediated two-dimensional nucleation and growth mechanism of graphene grown using catalytic CVD under conditions sought out in the semiconductor industry. In applications where the thickness and packing density of the graphene layer need to carefully controlled, the Langmuir Blodgett method has been used to produce single layer films of graphene and graphene oxide, which can then be reduced to graphene. Some of the benefits of Langmuir Blodgett deposition include accurate control over the layered architecture of the graphene, that the layer by layer deposition process allows assembling any combination of thin carbon layers on a substrate and that the assembly process is performed at room temperature and produces greater throughputs while being amenable to automation and mass production. Graphene is the only form of carbon in which every atom is available for chemical reaction from two sides. Atoms at the edges of a graphene sheet have special chemical reactivity. Graphene has the highest ratio of edge atoms of any allotrope. Defects within a sheet increase its chemical reactivity. The onset temperature of reaction between the basal plane of single-layer graphene and oxygen gas is below 268 degrees C. Graphene combusts at 358 degrees C. Graphene is commonly modified with oxygen and nitrogen containing functional groups and analyzed by infrared spectroscopy and X-ray photoelectron spectroscopy. However, determination of structures of graphene with oxygen and nitrogen functional groups requires the structures to be well controlled. Contrary to the ideal 2D structure of graphene, Chemical applications of graphene need either structural or chemical irregularities, as perfectly flat graphene is chemically inert. In other words, the definition of an ideal graphene is different in chemistry and physics. Graphene placed on a soda lime glass substrate under ambient conditions exhibited spontaneous endoping via surface transfer. On P-type copper indium gallium diazolinid semiconductor itself deposited on SLG and doping reached 2.11 A1013E slash CM2. Various graphene derivatives, e.g., cyanographene and graphene acid, can be prepared via elegant chemistry of fluorographene. Cyanographene and graphene acid have high degree of functionalization, open band gap and are hydrophilic providing stable colloids in water. Graphene is a transparent and flexible conductor that holds promise for various materials device applications, including solar cells, light-emitting diodes, touch panels, and smart windows or phones. For example, Graphene-based touch panel modules produced by a China-based company have been sold in volume to cell phone, wearable device, and home appliance manufacturers.
Other early commercial uses of graphene include fillers such as a graphene infused printer powder. Graphene supercapacitors serve as energy storage alternative to traditional electrolytic batteries. Among advantages are fast charging, long lifespan, and environmentally friendly production. Graphene supercapacitors produced by Skeleton Technologies have been commercially available since around 2015 and were first used in some specialized applications instead of traditional batteries. By 2017, commercial Graphene supercapacitor units were available for industrial power applications, with maximal power output of 1,500 kilowatts. In 2016, Agero announced a regenerative braking system for large trucks that employed a graphene-based supercapacitor. In 2016, Henrik Fisker announced development of an electric car that will use graphene supercapacitor instead of lithium-ion batteries. Its low energy density as compared to lithium-ion batteries is being addressed. The planned electric car would target a minimum range of 400 miles. It has been announced later that the electric car produced by Fisker Incorporated will still use lithium-ion batteries, but research in Graphene supercapacitors will continue by Nanotech Energy Inc. BACS 2016 Mono model is said to be made out of Graphene as a first of both a street legal track car and a production car. The first company to use graphene made structural parts on a production model was Spania GDA, which unveiled a version of its Spano supercar fitted with Graphene in 2015. The global market for Graphene reached $9 million by 2012 with most sales in the semiconductor, electronics, battery, energy storage, or conversion, and composites industries. The toxicity of Graphene has been extensively debated. A review on Graphene toxicity summarized the in vitro, in vivo, antimicrobial, and environmental effects and highlights the various mechanisms of Graphene toxicity. Nanotubes of Graphene could reproduce the effects of asbestosis. The toxicity of Graphene depends its shape, size, purity, post-production processing steps, oxidative state, functional groups, dispersion state, synthesis methods, route, dose of administration, and exposure times. Graphene nanoribbons, Graphene nanoplatelets, and Graphene nanoeuro onions are non-toxic at concentrations up to 50 Ag ml. These nanoparticles do not alter the differentiation of human bone marrow stem cells towards osteoblasts or adipocytes suggesting that at low doses graphene nanoparticles are safe for biomedical applications. 10 am fulayered graphene flakes were able to pierce cell membranes in solution. They were observed to enter initially via sharp and jagged points, allowing graphene to enter the cell. The physiological effects of this remain uncertain, and this remains a relatively unexplored field. The theory of Graphene was first explored by Wallace in 1947 as a starting point for understanding the electronic properties of 3D graphite. The emergent massless Dirac equation was first pointed out by C. Menoff, DiVincenzo, and Melli. The earliest TEM images of few-layer graphite were published by Roos and Vogt in 1948. An early, detailed study on few-layer graphite dates to 1962 when Boehm and colleagues reported producing monolayer flakes of reduced graphene oxide. Efforts to make thin films of graphite by mechanical exfoliation started in 1990 but nothing thinner than 50 to 100 layers was produced before 2004. Initial attempts to make atomically thin graphitic films employed exfoliation techniques similar to the drawing method. 
Multi-layer samples down to 10 nm in thickness were obtained. One of the first patents pertaining to the production of Graphene was filed in October 2002 and granted in 2006. Two years later, in 2004 Game and Novoslov extracted single-atom thick crystallites from bulk graphite and transferred them onto thin silicon dioxide on a silicon wafer, which electrically isolated the graphene. The cleavage technique led directly to the first observation of the anomalous quantum Hall effect in graphene, which provided direct evidence of graphene's theoretically predicted Berry's phase of massless Dirac fermions. The effect was reported by Games Group and by Kim and Zhang, whose papers appeared in Nature in 2005. Game and Novoslov received awards for their pioneering research on Graphene, notably the 2010 Nobel Prize in Physics. In 2013, the European Commission funded the large-scale research project Graphene flagship with a total budget of A1 billion, involving 150 partner organizations. Commercialization of Graphene proceeded rapidly once commercial-scale production was demonstrated. By 2017, 13 years after creation of the first laboratory Graphene electronic device, an integrated Graphene electronics chip was produced commercially and marketed to pharmaceutical researchers by Nanomedical Diagnostics in San Diego. Biological Forms Production Chemistry Potential Applications Health and Safety History Sources <laughs>